there is a fork in the road that's approaching you. And you can stay on the path which curves to the left by denying the existence of Satanism in the fullness that you've been shown. Or you can surrender to the truth and take the right hand path. Now where that road could lead is the sweetest risk you'll ever take. Are you still pretending that this one eye religion of Freemasonry isn't Luciferianism? See this here is the biggest obstacle you'll ever face. The very thing that could lead you to the prize is the very thing that will keep you from it. The reality of international Satanism. In the shadow of Christianity, Satanism has always been there. With every church that sprung up, so did its invisible enemy, the Satanic Church. Growing out of sight and out of mind from this to this. And Christianity has long been deprived of its power, as clearly demonstrable by the absolute lack of preaching against the institution of Freemasonry. Satanism's magic cloak, Satanism's magic trick, that's Freemasonry. And how they are laughing for now. So Freemasons are now are at the helm of the power structure of society, which means Satanism rules. And they're making their move for the new order of the ages. Are you that besotted by this evil world that you'll even deny the existence of secret societies? And what about the American president, John Kennedy? Was he just a nut job like me? Warning us about an international secret society with an international secret plot. A Freemason trying to tell you and the world about Freemasonry. Shot through the head. I've shown you who they are. I've shown you how they successfully operate with degrees of initiations and horrific and illegal oaths of secrecy. And I've shown you why they are a secret society. I've proven it to you. And only now that I've done that, I can show you in this many minutes what the shocking new order that Freemasonry has so cautiously been guiding us toward actually looks like. And of course, you won't believe that either. By now, there's a 98.5% chance that you belong to the world. And in that case, the world can do will do and is doing whatever the hell it wants to do with you. And when all you have is the world, you'll do anything to hold on to it. Christian or not, most of you will follow this world straight to the slaughterhouse in the name of peace, safety and progress. Clinging to it because all you love is inside it. Blissfully ignoring people like me, warning you of who's really in charge of it. Men, women, Actors, singers, businessmen, and politicians, all interlocked, whose God is named Lucifer. You've seen it with your own eyes, but now you can hear it with your own ears from this 33 degree Freemason in person, just in case the Masonic literature wasn't enough for you. Okay, find Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy, virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the internet. Uh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach us that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, what you're about those hospitals? They, 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 you know, sir, Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not, we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 5. You've been bred from childhood to fall for the biggest lie ever told, that Satan doesn't exist. And if Satan doesn't exist, well, then neither does Jesus. And while your heroes, heroes and idols, know full well that they do exist. And when I say you've been bred from childhood, I mean just that. Walter Disney was a high-ranking Freemason. He is a Masonic stamp dedicated to him, and he's very exclusive Club 33, which stands for the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. And who's the god of the 33rd degree Freemason, Walt Disney? 
Or well, Walter hides the answer in plain sight, because that's what Freemasons do. Firstly, the God of Mr. Disney is wicked. See how they veil evil with a cloak of innocence? What does the word veil itself conceal? Secondly, Walter's God is horny, symbolized by the horned God of the witches. And we all know Walt Disney loves magic, which is witchcraft. So the depictions of sex are hidden in plain sight as well. Remember, lust produces life, not love. So lust is purity. Lust is love for the high degree Freemason. And thirdly, he hides the number of his God's name in the open as well. No, no, that's not a triple six he's seeing interwoven in the design. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Not even when they separate the sixes from the name, all three of them, and place them together for you like this, in plain sight. No, not even then will people see. Do you think things are any better 50 years later? Here's the eye of Lucifer in the, Nick, in the Nickelodeon channel and his lightning flash. Remember what they actually believe about Satan. From Freemason Helena Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, meaning the secret belief, who is Satan? He is the angel who was proud enough to believe himself God, brave enough to buy his independence at the price of eternal suffering and torture, beautiful enough to have adored himself in full divine light, strong enough to still reign in darkness amidst agony. Helena Blavatsky is suggested as recommended reading by the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry right here. And the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry speaking of Lucifer, Satan and the Devil on page 407 writes that to the initiate, the Devil is the instrument of liberty or free will. That's who Lucifer is to them, okay? To show you how little you know of who you're dealing with and the extent of this religion's influence and power, not to mention their plans, let me jump ahead for a minute. Watch this. This is Lucius Trust. The Lucius Trust is a non-for-profit service organization incorporated in the United States in 1922. And their objective from Lucius Trust website, dedicated to the establishment of a new and better way of life for everyone in the world, based on the fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. The divine plan. A new way of life. Like a new world system. Like a new order. Now you want to see who they work for? The Lucius Trust has consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. The United Nations, the UN. They consult the United Nations of the world. They advise the United Nations of the world. Now look at this. The Lucius Trust's publishing company was founded in the early 1920s as Lucifer Publishing Company. The Lucius Trust says that the name was probably chosen to honor Lucifer. What on earth does a modern day consultant to the most powerful and progressive force engaged in uniting all nations under one banner, the UN, have to do with the fallen angel of the Holy Bible, the one that Jesus Christ told us would manifest on earth as a world ruler to deceive the whole world into a new world system. Yes, that angel. Why on earth would they honor that angel? Well, that's easy. They were founded by Freemasons. Incorporated into the United States by Alice Bailey and her husband, Foster, well, here's a book written by Foster the Freemason, The Spirit of Freemasonry, published by Lucius Press, also known as Lucifer Publishing. And one last thing. If you dig a little, you'll find an article on their website, The Esoteric Meaning of Lucifer, on a modern company website with consultative powers to the United Nations of all things. Wow, I really hope you're seeing this. In the article, it states that the Baileys had enormous respect for H.P. Blavatsky, who stated in her renowned occult book, The Secret Doctrine, on page 245 in a chapter called Holy Satan. It is Satan who is the God of our planet and the only God. 
Then the article goes on to say that the Baileys sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Everything has been reversed. Evil is good. Jesus is the enemy. And Lucifer sacrificed himself for you, not Jesus Christ. The one who washed the feet of his disciples and the only one they fear. Modern progressive atheists do not influence world events, people. Satanists do. Remember the goal of the Lucius Trust? The fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. Yeah, the divine plan exposed by Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Hence their war on the Bible and the abolition of it from the school system and even from modern Christian churches who dare not preach from the book of Revelation. Your most highly evolved and contemporary leaders of, of society secretly believe that in the theos theosophical perspective, the descent of these solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace, but rather an act of great sacrifice. They believe in the fallen angels and their revolt against God, as revealed in the Bible, led by the devil, the chief commander of Freemason Bob Dylan, remember? These people make contact with these fallen angels, with the royal art of Freemasonry called witchcraft. Please stick around. Let me show you that. How many solar angels does the Bible say followed Lucifer out of this heaven, heavenly realm? A third of the angels makes 33%. Does that number sound familiar yet? 33 degrees of Freemasonry. Just a coincidence. From the Gospels again, which expose these people every time. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels and who has access to some visionary world beguile you, trick you of your reward. You still don't believe that the false humility of the charitable fraternity of the Freemasons is behind it all? Well, Blavatsky also published a magazine called Lucifer with a woman named Annie Besant. And here's a letter written by Annie herself with the official Masonic letterhead. And here Annie signs off as a 33rd degree Freemason. Printed also on the left-hand corner, Annie Besant, 33rd degree, and a member of the Supreme Council. Undeniable and undisputable, please don't make me prove it to you over and over. Have you caught a glimpse of who you're dealing with yet? They're all Freemasons, high ranking. And they're all buffeted by a plethora of Masonic dupes who don't know any of this because they can't decipher the symbols and they don't care to try. They're proud and boastful and defensive of their beloved fraternity in which they get to rub shoulders with the most important people of their suburbs, cities and towns and in which they got on their knees to take blood oaths of death, calling other old, decrepitated men worshipful master. Yet still they think it's innocent and has nothing to hide. Delusional and lost, almost beyond hope. Some of them still think it's a Christian organization, just like the founder of the, the Satanic Church described. What do you get when you carefully conceal Satanism with Christianity? You get Freemasonry. People, Satanism is at the core of our world and it is behind the new order that will be implemented soon enough. It will be all done through deception. You'll be tricked. Remember how I told you that the all-seeing eye sees that we're in hell? Well, the massive witch and Freemason Helena says so right here. Satan is the minister of God, Lord of the seven mansions of Hades, the angel of of the manifest worlds. Hades means hell, manifest worlds means earth. This is who you're dealing with. This is the religion and the beliefs of the rich, powerful and famous. And yes, politicians. Do you want to go back to sleep? You can sleep after this? Well, wait till I show you what they're going to do to you, coming up in this many minutes. For those who simply refuse to believe that Bono or Scott Morrison or Prince can be Luciferians because they all go to church. Let me show you another Masonic ritual they do. And this is before Satanism or Luciferianism is revealed to the candidate 
And then you tell me if Bono or Scott are capable of secretly believing in Lucifer. It all starts here with the Masonic apron. Different kinds signifying different grades. Have you guessed what it's hiding yet? The genitals. Pretty obvious. Like everything else they hide once you can see. The genitals are the true working tools of a mason. Freemasonry is foundationally a sex cult, like Satanism, because it all starts with sex, doesn't it? Life itself starts with sex. So the mystical force of the true God of Freemasonry hides in the hidden part of the human body. That's the Holy of Holies, covered by the Masonic apron, the seat of God, the seat of Lucifer. See he was Satanist King Diamond's artwork? The eye is attached to the horn god, but look at where the eye starts, from the waist down. That's where the apron of a mason begins. And the one eye of Freemasonry is also the one eye of the penis, where life generates and springs forth. See the openly hidden secret of the Masonic Square and Compass now? You're looking at the sex act. That's the female in missionary position, and that's the male mounting her. The sex act. And the eye in the middle, with these emanating rays, is the orgasm and the ejaculation of the penis. See life shooting forth. That's how they see the sun and the earth too. The sun is the visible penis of their true God, shooting forth life continually. The light itself is the mystical sperm of the God of this world. The sun and penis generate life, while the earth and female womb produce life. The letter G, when replacing the I in the middle of the square and compass, stands for generation, sexual generation. The practical aspect of Freemasonry and Satanism's religion is that of a sex cult. You see Rod Stewart telling you he's a Freemason by displaying the hidden hand of Freemasonry, also known as the master of the second veil, and look at his other hand, taking the Masonic apron's place for covering his penis which is the Holy of Holies, the seat of God for the Mason, and from the Grand Pontiff of Freemasonry, Albert Pike. Hence the significancy of the phallus, the penis, or of its inoffensive substitute, the obelisk. Straight from the horse's mouth, the erect penis graces us, or should I say disgraces us, with its presence in every country in the world, marking its territory, the Masonic obelisk, in our face, everywhere making its bold statement, yelling, screaming in silence. This is another reason why we're considered the ignorant and stupid masses. Another example of hidden in plain sight. And here's an erect penis on the front page of the female Freemasonry magazine, The Eastern Star. I once stood in front of this obelisk in Sydney and I must have asked 30 people what they thought it was. Not a single one of them knew. To the Freemasons of the higher degrees, the whole universe is in fact one giant and continuous sex act. This is the structure of Freemasonry. You can take this path to the top or this path. And way up here, you have the order of the mystic shrine. The mystic shrine is what's found behind the Masonic apron, because that's where life comes from. That's the mystic shrine. You have to be a 32nd degree Freemason to be asked to join the order of the mystic shrine. And then... Once you're inside, you can be invited to join this order, the Royal Order of Jesters. See, Freemasonry is like Russian dolls, and Satanism is at its center. Look at some of the pins and the pell designs for the Order of the Jesters. You can only join them unless you're at least a 32nd degree Freemason. Sex and debauchery. Erections the adoration of the phallus, masturbation, devils, demons, fallen angels, this one here mocking holiness, reference to the anus, and sodomy, anything to mock the Bible. This disgusting one has King Momus sitting on a female's face and hidden in plain sight is the square and the compass for those who have eyes to see. Bestiality, yes indeed. 
this bagpipe player has an erection and the sheep is running away scared. Self-explanatory. This one, this character has an emphasized eye, if you can see that, and the skull has an emphasized eye also. The wink and the one eye of the Indian. And the secrecy, the symbols of secrecy. On the far right here, the monkey covers his groin area, symbolizing the Masonic apron. And the black and white dogs, well, they symbolize the checkered floorboard of the Masonic lodge, which is sexualized male and female principles. The horned god, where evil and good don't exist. And in the first degree, Masons are given a Bible stamped with a square and compass, oblivious to the inherent mockery and the foundation of the whole fraternity, as alluded to here with a genuine royal order of jester's private lapel. This is a certificate that a jester receives after his initiation, and you see here their patron is named King Momus, and he was a god or a daemon, which is a variant of the word demon, who was expelled from heaven, as the legend goes. Sounds just like Lucifer, because it is. Did Freemasonry disassociate themselves from the tax-exempt branch of Freemasonry known as the Jesters? Well, no, they didn't. Because, I mean, this is rare footage of an event within, within the Lodge. Now, I'm sorry about the quality of this, but this is a Masonic Lodge. So for Masons that want to say that the Jesters are contrary to Masonry, well, look. Look at these dirty old men. Masters of the Lodge with sublime morals, all married, probably all have daughters and granddaughters, yet still this inside the lodge. But for you it should be obvious, because you can see the square encompass, compass, the sex act, and the all-seeing eye right in the middle. I told you that Satanism was the oldest religion in the world, and it is. The sex act was ritualized and organized as a religion before we called it Satanism. But Satan has always been the god, the horny god, the horned god of these sex cults. All of them, from Samaria to Egypt to Greece and so on, that's called, that's called paganism. And the real Bible of the Freemasons and the pagans, the one not written by hand, the one that's older than any book, the one that supersedes all the rest in age, thus making it the purest and most unadulterated word of God in the eyes of the Freemasons, is nature. Nature is their Bible. And before you think there's nothing wrong with that, wait a second, because you're not thinking straight. Ask a Mason whether he be a first degree or a 33rd degree, what is Freemasonry? And the universal go-to answer is this. A peculiar system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Now, why would you need to veil your morals? Because in their peculiar system, evil is good and good is evil. That's Satanism 101. A peculiar system of morals. That should tell you something. That should tell you everything. Why would your morals need to be a secret? Because their deeds are in fact evil. Glorifying the laws of nature where cruelty and self-obsession obsession are virtuous characteristics. That's nature. Nature is as cruel as she is kind. The checkered floorboard where everything is legal. It's Christianity that lives in reverse. The first shall be last. Love your enemies. The meek shall inherit the earth. These are unholy and unnatural concepts in the eyes of visible nature. The nature of Freemasonry, which is Satanism. What the Freemasons really mean by this morality veiled in allegory is that they're allowed to steal because nature allows it. They're allowed to kill because nature allows it. They're allowed to commit adultery because nature isn't monogamous. They're allowed to lie, indulge in all their God-given senses, especially sexual, because nature encourages it as long as no one finds out under oath. Jesus said, narrow is the road that leads to life and broad is the road that leads to destruction. The Freemason of the century says, no true Mason can be narrow for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness because broad are the divine 
laws of nature. While they glorify those laws, Christianity breaks those laws. It becomes supernatural because only then can you love your enemy. And so it goes that Christianity is despised by Freemasonry, the real Freemasons, because their Bible is nature. And by nature, they know the personality traits of their God, Satan, because he's the God of this world, just as the Freemasons, the enemies of mankind, say that he is. And just like Jesus said he was too. So they believe that Jesus is evil because he denies human nature and burdens us with the knowledge of sin. Observable nature, that's what guides the Masons ethics and the Masons morals. That's why they're called free Masons. Believe you me, because they're free from moral obligations, free from sin, from guilt. They're free from Jesus Christ. These people are introducing this new system of the world, this new age. You're going to miss Christianity when it's gone. Mark my words. Because you have no rights in the eyes of nature, which is the Bible of Freemasonry and Satanism. And soon that will become painfully plain as a fact of life. Now, please, I give you fair warning of what's to come in this presentation. It's very disturbing, or at least it should be. But cause to celebrate follows the disgusting things you're about to see. This is precisely where my own life and well-being come into danger. So let me say this right now. If you hear of my sudden death or of my possession of half a kilogram of cocaine or child porn or my overdose or my suicide, remember this video. And if something so unfortunate should happen to me, may it serve as a catapult to you and as a remembrance of the conclusion to this presentation, which is this many minutes away. Do I really think they're going to make me pay for this video, for breaking my oaths? Well, seeing as people are so far gone, lost in the illusion that secret societies have constructed around you and inside you, and seeing as they can simply pull this video down, close my account and whatnot, no, I don't think they'll come after me. But if they do, let me say this to the Grand Lodge that orders my demise right now. Jesus wins. So in saying all that, here we go. Is Scott Morrison a Satanist? I'll let you answer that. Here is a ritual that Scott and every Freemason from this guy to this girl have performed. There is one Masonic apron you'll never see being worn. This one. And when I bumped into it, I thought it was a fake. Until I found this. In Richardson's Monitor Freemasonry. Official Masonic Literature. Written for Masons only, on this page. What is that head doing there? You'll find out in a sec. Let's read the description of the apron worn in this degree. Speaking of the initiates, it states, They wear white aprons sprinkled with blood red and lined and bordered with black. On the flap of the apron, a bloody arm holding a dagger. And on the apron, a bloody arm holding a bloody head by the hair. Now this is why there's an illustration of a decapitated head. And this is going to become to a bone-chilling conclusion. So during this ritual, the candidate removes the blindfold and discovers a basin of water with a tumbler beside it. He's also astonished to find a human head lying on the floor. The master of ceremonies returns and directs the candidate to take up the knife in his right hand and the head in his left. Yes. This Pope, this rock star, this pop star, this actor, this actress, and this beloved Prime Minister, this is what they've done. All of them, hands down. And you thought all you needed to be is talented to succeed? No, you need to belong to the secret society called Freemasonry. And believe me, when you belong to them, you belong to them. Now you tell me. Can these people end up believing in Lucifer? Is that really a stretch? Carrying around a bloody head? Swearing to have your brain cooked, tongue torn out from the roots if you ever reveal anything? No, the stretch is that you think they couldn't believe in Lucifer. That's the stretch. Lucifer, the one who sets you free, remember, from sin by sinning. 
Can you now see the bloody spirit of Freemasonry lurking behind the veneer of charity and the veneer of Christianity? Because Scott Morrison goes to church, apparently. The Pope is a Christian, apparently. But look at these people. So-called Christians, all Christians, gathered around a giant erect phallus in the middle of the Catholic square. This is Freemasonry, the demolition of morals, the creation of hypocrisy and the demolition of true virtue. These minds are directing the future. Now, to be fair, I don't know if these heads are real heads. I never got that far to find out. But I will tell you this. All the skulls they use are, they're real. All the skeletons they use are, they're real. And they run every single noteworthy funeral home in Australia and the world. I know that personally and for a fact. Once again, you are only seeing the tip of the iceberg because I can't bring myself to tell you about what I really know of the rituals that come after the 33rd degree Freemasonry. For as much as they celebrate life in various grotesque ways, they also celebrate death in ritual form. Which are the things I can't speak of to you? They have to celebrate death in order to prove that they can see things through the all-seeing eye. The one that sees above evil and above good. The checkered floorboard where things kill each other to live. Where life is cruel, where morals are broad. There is no sin. There is only nature. See, these Masonic rituals are designed to desensitize the candidate further and further in preparation for the raw truth of Satanism, the truth which is plainly stated by the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry. Lucifer is the light bearer, and that you should doubt it not from their own literature and from their own mouths until finally the candidate's introduction into the royal art of Freemasonry, witchcraft. The ancient craft. Why do you think that witchcraft has disappeared? It never disappeared. It was hidden. Forced to go into hiding by the appearance of Jesus on the human scene. Another reason why he's passionately hated. And soon him and his ways will be done away with in this new world. And so will your rights. You still don't believe me. You're still doubting all the evidence, like the Freemasons are counting on you to doubt. Well, remember from the Encyclopedia of American Religions, the continuing impact of speculative modern Freemasonry provided fertile soil in which new magical orders could grow. Watch this two-minute clip. I can vouch for every single thing you hear come from the former Masons' mouths. In the initiation in Freemasonry, we had to be recommended by another Mason. Well, in order to join witchcraft, you have to be first screened. You have to be recommended by somebody currently in witchcraft. Well, when I was initiated, I was blindfolded and bound by a rope. And on your bare chest was thrust the point of a spear. In witchcraft, we were initiated through a, uh, a very involved ritual, uh, initiation ceremony, uh, wherein the uh, candidate was led uh, blindfolded, uh, bound by a rope, uh, to the edge of uh, the uh, magic circle. And the rope is around your neck and your lid forward. And up front, at the eastern end of the building, is a person who's a worshipful master. And you kneel down before him as if he were a god. You were met uh, by the uh, high priest or high priestess uh, at that time, usually with a sword uh, to your chest. When I went to enter the lodge, a sharp object was put to my left breast. And I was warned that should I reveal any of the secrets of Freemasonry uh, to know what to expect. When you're presented before the high priest, a sword is held against your chest and you actually take a blood oath, promising to remain faithful to the secrets of witchcraft. Well, when you are in the room, this um, blindfold is taken away from you, and this is a time when they 
say that you're coming from darkness into light. During the initiation ceremony, the, the initiate is led by the lieutenant of the uh, high priest and is challenged at the edge of the circle by someone saying, who goes there? And the answer is, one from the world of darkness. In masonry, the prayers are ended with so moted me. Oh, and one of the other aspects of, uh, or distinctives of the craft was that we would always end any spell or ritual where we release the power, this is where the power was released, with the word so mote it be. By now, this should sound like a stupid question, but why do you think that the initiation ceremonies into witchcraft are almost identical to that of Freemasonry? I'm not even going to answer that. Come on, people, wake up with me. Here's Colin Minogue, a Freemason, okay? Hidden hand of Freemasonry and the one eye symbolism of the God of her religion. Now, here she is giving the vow of silence, but what the masses fail to see is what's written on the book she's holding. Witchcraft. The Royal Art of Freemasonry. This is what her vow of silence is referring to in the picture. Yes, Kylie Minogue is a witch. And if you're still that deluded by the magic wand that is television, entertainment, movies, media and whatnot, then you'll no doubt fail to use the incredible eyes that God gave you from which to see the real world with, the evil world, where Satanists are at the helm. The ban on witchcraft was only officially lifted in England in the 50s, after more than 1,500 years. So that tells you who's in control now. And when I give you a glimpse into witchcraft in a minute, you'll see why it's evil and why it should be anything but legal, even when using it for, for so-called good, because the well they draw from is poisoned. But thanks to propaganda, the craft of the witch has been absorbed into the realm of fantasy. Justin Timberlake here is also referring to magic in this cover art, with the all-seeing eye looking through the number of their god. Magic. Magic is a much smoother and more acceptable word than witchcraft, that other word. That word still retains its ferociousness, its true character. But that word has been sterilized. That word isn't real to you anymore. You can't feel it for what it really is. Or if you do, your mind has isolated it, confined it to some small groups of unimportance scattered here and there over this diverse world. And so it's nothing to be feared or concerned about. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. Now, some witches want to say that witchcraft isn't Satanism. That's either more delusion or misdirection as confirmed here by Anton LaVey in the Companion to the Satanic Bible when speaking of the followers of the Witchcraft Not Satanism School. He writes very accurately that they cannot afford to admit to an affinity with anything that bears the name Satan. He knows where the power of witchcraft comes from. Now, does that mean that Justin Timberlake is a Satanist because of his symbolism and the use of his word alluding to witchcraft and his artwork? Well, yes, actually, that's correct. He is. Here's a quote from, his, one, of his, from one of his songs. You want to see who else is in good company with these famous idols? Suzanne Atkins. Same sign, same religion, Satanism. Do they all have to admit it in the English language for you to believe me? Or can the symbols they use finally be enough for you? Look at what another legendary Freemason, Arthur E. Waite, states. Out of evil comes good. And the confusion of tongues gave rise to the ancient practice of Masons conversing without the use of speech. Out of evil comes good. So it's good to do evil. That's what he's saying. See, I'm trying to include you into the conversation that the Freemasons are having with each other in public via symbolism unbeknownst to you. Listen to what famous U.S. footballer Tom Brady said regarding his wife. So, man, I listen to her. And right after the game, she said, see, I did a lot of work. You do your work, I do mine. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. Well, this is Tom Brady. And this is his wife. Both initiated into the secret society. Of course they are. 
Wait, she's not displaying the one-eye symbol of the Freemasons, is she? Uh, that's just art, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. She's a witch, and her husband just told you she was. Here's Steve Miller's front cover to the famous song Abracadabra. And he covers his eye, because he's a member of the one-eyed religion. And Abracadabra is a legitimate word used in witchcraft. Here it is in the 100-year-old Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. Why would the word Abracadabra be in the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the fraternity that runs charities, hospitals, nursing homes, and that secretly supply us with popes, presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens, and the bulk of our entertainers? Why? You know, I really think it's time to show you what the Satanists dressed as Freemasons are going to do to you and the world to finally establish their new world, their utopia. And this is going to be the segue into that. This is my last practical example of Freemasonry's satanic roots. And then I'll close this presentation with the most shocking thing you'll see or hear. You probably won't care, but to the precious few who remain, I will send you off with the greatest and most beautiful shock of all. This is Jay-Z inside his Masonic Lodge. You can see the Masons in aprons in front of him. This is where Jay-Z takes his sick oaths of silence, kneels down in front of other men and calls them most worshipful master. An appalling title to give to a man on this planet. Jay-Z the Freemason writes songs like this. This one's called Lucifer. And in Empire State of Mind he writes, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. Oh, but he, he can save you, Jay-Z. He can even wake you up just before you collide into a concrete wall doing 120 kilometers an hour. I should know. This is fellow member of the craft, Alicia Keys, who sings on the track. Here she is, showing her allegiance and wearing the broken and bloody cross of Jesus Christ. The occult peace sign, pure hatred for Jesus. There is peace when your conscience has been killed, seed to sin, and you can indulge to anything. A false and temporary kind of peace, no doubt. Here's a shirt off Jay-Z's clothing line, purely Masonic, The Craft. Well, this is The Craft he's referring to. This is him with well-known witch Marina Abramovich, also showing her sign of allegiance to Freemasonry. Now here we go. Here's Jay-Z wearing a most revealing top and the dead giveaway that you need to see behind the curtain of Freemasonry. Do what thou wilt. Do whatever you want. That's the adopted motto of the most notorious Satanist of the 20th century, 33rd degree Freemason, Alistair Crowley. Here is his certificate of appointment, known as the 33rd degree inscription and the double-headed eagle of Freemasonry. And here, next to his name on the certificate, including the symbol for a Grand Commander of Freemasonry, as shown in their encyclopedia. But to really confirm that he's a Freemason, here he is doing the Masonic sign of the Master of the Second Veil. Now here's a legitimate letter from, from Alistair. Again, the addition of his uh, inscription of the 33rd degree, and he signs off with a symbol of the past Commander of Freemasonry. What does he write beside it? Baphomet. This Baphomet. Now listen to this man to get a clearer picture of the truth behind the secret religion of the stars and the leaders of the world. Alistair is the founder of a Luciferian church called the Ordo Templi Orientis, and he named himself the Beast 666, straight from the Bible, depicting the number of wickedness in human form. In his what's called Liber's writings, he says, with my hawk's head, I peck at the eyes of Jesus as he hangs upon the cross. Do you see the hatred? You think they don't hate you too? Keep watching. And from the equinox, with the all-seeing eye of Freemasonry, this illustration. What does it mean? The writer himself explains. The picture is symbolic of the new eon, the new age. From the blasted stump of dogma hangs the hag with dyed and bloody hair. Christianity. 
there's a massive glimpse into the new world order that's coming. Keep watching. And down here, do what thou wilt is the true nature. The true nature, remember? The broad morals. There is no such thing as evil. So do what you want. Can you see the Masonic future yet? Can you see the hidden hatred that pulses through its veins? If they believe in do what thou wilt, what do you think they will do to you? And what do you think they'll do in order to build this new world? This is from a commentary on his book of the law. The beast 666 adviseth that all children should be accustomed from infancy to witness every type of sexual act. Do what thou wilt. And what about the royal art of Freemasonry? Magic is the highest, most absolute, and most divine knowledge of natural philosophy. What a statement. The highest, most absolute and divine. Well, let's have a closer look into some of the more hidden secrets of the most divine natural philosophy known as magic. Any living being is a storehouse of energy, varying in quantity according to the size and health of the animal. At the death of the animal, this energy is liberated suddenly. The animal, therefore, should be killed within the circle, within the magic circle. So that energy that's released can be captured and directed to serve the will of the witch, male or female. This is a science, a hidden science. But now hear this, coming from a 33rd degree Freemason. And don't you forget that. For the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force. A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most suitable sacrifice. Can you see? This is who Jay-Z is quoting on his top. This is who this Jonas brother holds in high esteem. This is who the Beatles have on their front cover as a figure they admire. No worse, they put at the top. This is the same picture of the front cover in a mirrored form and after some kaleidoscoping, you'll find this. Fellow Freemason Alistair Crowley sits at the top, and down the bottom there even appears the phallus with the testicles, and up here the vesica pisces, also known as the vagina. Does, does this picture make more sense now? All Freemasons, yes indeed. And by the way, that's where JC got his symbol from, from Satanism, as portrayed here by Satanist and Freemason Alistair Crowley, and by Satanic Church founder Anton LaVey. Does anyone still think that Freemasonry isn't Satanism in disguise? Let's finally take a peek into the Royal Art of Freemasonry. And this is the briefest way I can show you from the complete book of Magic and Witchcraft. This is a practitioner's manual, not from some bogus author trying to expose witchcraft. Just so you can get it through your head that this is real and this is protected. The writer or compiler of this godforsaken book warns the reader that the recipes may seem disgusting, that the knowledge revealed has been forbidden and has caused suffering and death to witches and the victims of witches. You don't think witch, witchcraft was a serious menace in times past and present? Come with me and I'll show you how bad this menace actually gets. As the world's most powerful and secret religion moves ever closer to fulfilling its biblical destiny and it will. Close your eyes or not, it will fulfill its destiny. Firstly, let's connect this sick art straight to modern Freemasonry with the word abracadabra. Both written in triangular form, from the Manual of Witchcraft and from the Encyclopedia of the Secret Society that your Prime Minister belongs to. And just like high-ranking Freemasons, male and female witches also drink out of a human skull. But here the practitioner drinks wine, in which they first dissolve or boil the brains or heart of an animal before consuming it all from the human skull. In this ritual, the initiate is instructed to drink in the night at spring water out of a skull of one that hath been slain. That's right, out of a, the skull of a human who's been murdered or sacrificed. Otherwise, eat a pig with a knife that slew a man. Please don't turn away. Look straight ahead and open your eyes to the planet you are on. Because the real monster under your bed doesn't actually go away when you close your eyes. 
In other rituals of the craft, you burn a rooster while he's alive. With the use of a, of a poisonous plant used in ointments and potions of witches, you can assure death and destruction on a victim. You want to make a female enemy sterile or a male enemy impotent for the rest of his life? Otherwise, you can just kill them. The hand of glory is the severed hand that is dried and preserved to be used in black magic. Yes, a dead human hand. A black circle is most effective for operations of evil. The use of blood and sex in ritual was considered helpful for obtaining the necessary energy to successfully work magic or achieve mystical insight. But here's where the darkness thickens even further. Animals such as black cats or children may be sacrificed and participants may drink the blood of the sacrifice. And just so you know that Stanley Kubrick wasn't joking, an orgy of participants sometimes follows the mass. No remorse, just science, the science of witchcraft, the royal art. And here, what's necessary for the working is the fat of young children, dead children. How many children do you think go missing in Australia every year? That's how many. And what about the world? Is it one million? Well, according to the International Centre for Missing and Exploited Children, it's eight million children per year. Do you think that the highest, most absolute and most divine knowledge of natural philosophy has anything to do with that? Any chance of an international secret system that is bolstered by initiations and degrees and bound under the most brutal penalties that the human mind can ever devise? Do you think that has any involvement? Any chance of that? Am I saying that this Freemason has sacrificed children? No, I never said that. But did he ever even remotely mention the secret societies? Did he ever try to warn you? Educate you? No, he was under oath. Am I saying that these Freemasons have sacrificed children? No, I never said that either. But have they ever warned you about the secret society that believes that Lucifer is the saviour? The, the society functioning right under your nose, that secret society? No, not a chance. Julia Gillard admitted she belonged to one, but that's about it because they're all under oath. So where does this ancient craft originate from? It originates from the spirit realm. From spirit beings, that's who taught mankind the royal art before civilization began. In this chapter, The Rites of Satanism and Witchcraft, the manual explains that a typical satanic Sabbath was, number one, a homage to the devil, usually performed as the osculum infamy, also known as the kiss of shame, which is so shameful that we'll just put it this way. The ritual involves kissing the hindquarters of the devil, the rear. Surely this is far removed from anything to do with Freemasonry. People, the original order of the Knights Templar were found guilty of this very same obscene ritual. And where do you find the modern variant of the Knights Templars of today? I told you, in the highest degree of Freemasonry, right here. Here's a couple of them now. And what's on this Templar's head? From the Masonic Encyclopedia, remember? A symbol of the Baphomet, according to 33rd degree Alistair Crowley. And we can confirm that in the Satanic Bible. That's exactly what's hiding deep inside of Freemasonry. I'm only showing you this to show you the reality of Satanism and the demonic realm, the world you can't see. On this earth? <laughs> and in this earth and in, uh, and in a world we can't see. Look here. The hierarchy of demons occupies a more important place in both black and white magic rituals. Both black and white. This is where the power of witchcraft comes from. And this is the reason these bizarre rituals actually function and actually work. Because after the ritual is performed on Earth, its effects are carried out to their conclusion in the spirit realm by spiritual beings or demons, actual demons. The reality that is hidden from you. Because if you found out that Satan was real, then that would have to make Jesus Christ real too. And he is the one they hate. And if Jesus Christ is real, that changes everything. 
And this is how much they hate him. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples is performed backwards. The high priest is sometimes naked. A prostitute assists him, and a naked virgin, who may later be deflowered, is the altar. Everything that is sacred is defiled, and everything that is filthy is honoured as pure. Because of their burning hatred of Jesus Christ, just as he's hated by the fallen angels that they worship, it gets worse when you hear what they use as a substitute for the bread that Jesus broke and told his disciples to eat in remembrance of him. A wafer which initiates me with this, this, and this. Or the name of Satan may be written upon it. And this isn't even witchcraft. This is just a ceremony announcing who they love and who they hate. So is Satan real? It continues to state in the hierarchy of demons at the very top, Satanakia, whose title is the Commander-in-Chief. What did Bob Dylan, the Freemason, call the one he made a bargain with? Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. Same title. Commander-in-Chief, Chief Commander. Are you following? But watch this. In case the darkness is getting a little too thick and encompassing for you, let's shine a little light. The true light that only the Gospels can supply. Speaking to us humans and revealing something about Satan, the Gospel state, you follow the spirit of the age in this world system as dominated by the commander of the spiritual powers of the air. Satan, the god of this world, the commander. You still think the Gospels are wrong or fake? See, Satanists know that the spirits also live in the air, just as the Gospels reveal. You can summon any of these demonic spirits by name if you possess the royal art. Who do you think this figure on the front cover represents? A magician who is inadequately prepared and cannot attain his desires may seek the aid of Satan. That's who this is. Now that you know, hopefully for a fact, that these are at the top of the human food chain. Do you think they'd be fooling around with stupid fairy tales? No, witchcraft and Satanism is absolutely real. Hence their earthly power. This demon here, fifth in the pyramid structure, holds the title of Inspector General. And what's the title of the highest degree in Freemasonry, who exists in every local lodge in every suburb, a suburb near you? Inspector General. Same title as the living demon. Do you believe me now? You can even conjure Lucifer himself, or be Beelzebuth, who the Gospels call the Prince of the Devils both of whom are listed as superior spirits in this book of witchcraft and magic. I can show you so much more from this disgusting book, but I'll cut it off here with the seal of Saturn, a demonic sigil from the complete book of magic and witchcraft. And this is his seal. Can you see? Do you see? This is the society that lives amongst you, above you, the one-eyed religion of Freemasonry, hidden right in front of those who have their eyes wide shut. I'm going to now show you what that world that they are building, from the ashes of the one you're currently living in, looks like. But lastly, to drive this business of blood sacrifice home, here's American rapper Azealia Banks, with the triple six hand sign, and now over the all-seeing eye, the all-seeing eye in her video, the eye in the triangle of the Freemasons on her shirt and the devil's horns. Her liberator, her master, her commander. And now displaying the secret society vow of silence. Along with that, the last brief glimpse into the highly concealed royal art of Freemasonry. The smell of crap that's about to come off my floor right now, guys. Oh my god. Three years worth of brujeria. Yes, you know, I gotta scrape all this shit up. And what does brujeria mean? You know what it means. Witchcraft. Azealia Banks, the witch, with her eye in the triangle shirt, and the logo of, for example, the Grand Lodge of Freemasonry in Spain. 
one and the same symbol. The logo of the Fraternity of the Freemasons and the logo of this Church of Lucifer. The one eye. One and the same symbol. Freemasonry has deceived you. Yes, people, now you know how Satanism has functioned out of sight and out of mind. You still think there's no such thing as witchcraft? Or that it only existed in the olden days? You still think that blood isn't a part of the royal art? You still think that local Masonic lodges of the world are not filtering systems for Satanists and a cloak for organized Satanism with a grand master plan for the world? You think there's nothing to the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Uh, after seeing all this and the Azealia Banks clip, and after realizing that there exists a hidden and guarded science of the art of blood sacrifice. You think there was no science behind Jesus' crucifixion? A deeper reality that we can't see or understand? You think Jesus didn't know what he was doing? Or are you one of those who still think he didn't exist? Tell me, how can they hate something that doesn't exist? If only you could hear from some other Freemasons who have the courage to break their oaths. But she won't. You won't. This is probably it. But I once heard from a Freemason, an honest one, in about 2016, after I posted this picture on Facebook. He knew. He knew the truth. Just like you do now, or just like you should. And he wrote to me. And he said, By the time we are done, every church will be a brothel. Well, in case you think that that's impossible, this is a fashion show that was held in a church, a real church, and it was organized by high-ranking Freemasons, who you will see now to be Satanists, designed to be a heart-wrenching mockery and a colossal sign of the times, this event. Just so you know, it's a Masonic production. Here's the inside of a lodge. See those twin pillars? Well, here they are. See the Masonic checkered floorboard? Well, there it is. See the Masonic square and compass? Well, there it is. And do you see the eye of Freemasonry? Yeah, there they are. The lower square in the square and compass has been disfigured so that... as to not make it too obvious. But now that we've established that, here is the spirit of Freemasonry, as displayed through just a few of the models. This one wears the horns of the Baphomet, the horns of Satan, with his all-seeing eye in the background. More horns. This model wears the all-seeing eye, as does this one. And this disgusting thing with another huge all-seeing eye of Lucifer in the background. Then there's this, with a satanic pentagram on her face. And finally, this male model in a skirt with two satanic inverted crosses of Jesus Christ on his top in a church. Oh, the morbid victory of the Freemasons. Unstoppable. For now. When people like Lady Gaga cover one eye while wearing an inverted cross and you don't see the connection of the one eye symbolism to Satanism, then your observational skills have been compromised. In the span of two days, I saw these ads in my local shopping centre. And that alone tells me that the Satanic Age is here, manifesting all around us, seemingly invisible, while you look straight ahead through the symbols. Just like the initiation process of the secret societies themselves, society at large must be incrementally introduced and seduced into further depravity and self-love. And haven't we been slowly but surely perverted over time, degree by degree, until we think that men dressing as women is beautiful and healthy, anal sex is a form of expressing love, the sick world of pornography is considered as liberating for women and men and protected by free speech. In California, babies are allowed to be aborted after birth because it's a woman's choice. And that's not considered murder. 
a world where we should applaud young children like Desmond is amazing, cross-dressing while he dances for gay men at a gay bar on a podium because he's paving the way for the kids of the future. And we should get shamed, fined and even jailed if we point out that this is sick, sinful and dare call it evil, which is what it is. What spirit is behind Desmond is amazing? Oh yeah, an evil spirit, no doubt about it. You think Freemasonry and their peculiar morals aren't behind the decline of Christian morality and morality worldwide? It's all by design. The Masonic war on Jesus and the Christian social structure, generally undetected by human perceptions, and still people will write to me and comment on how absurd what I've said is. A cloud over the eyes of their heart. Well, I'll tell you this. There is no bigger axe that has ever been grinded than the one Freemasonry grinds. Because the appearance of Jesus Christ pretty much destroyed their religion, drove it underground, and they will have their revenge. Soon you're going to see it. We've all been initiated into the lowest levels of materialistic Satanism under the banner of secular humanism. I know blokes who think that life's great, mate. Life's terrific. Life's what you make it. Evil, Lucifer, Satan, these are just words that Christians invented to help them sleep better at night. There are no cults. There are no conspiracies. John F. Kennedy's speech about secret societies plotting against the world, that's not relevant anymore. That's history. There's no such thing as Satanism amongst civilized people. Oh, children, when darkness comes to your door, takes your wife, takes your health, your job, your home, your freedom, your children. Then you call out, oh my God, my God, this is evil. Why is this happening to me? Well, here comes the darkness. Here comes the evil. You want to know what the new world order looks like? You want to know what the future holds? You want to know what horror is coming to our planet? As Jesus told us, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Masonic New World Order. These are the mysterious Georgia Guidestones, also known as the American Stonehenge. They are a set of granite monoliths which were constructed in 1980 and funded by an unknown and anonymous group and commissioned by a man using the pseudonym R.C. Christian. On a ledger beside the monument is written, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Here we have a reference to a new age. With this we get a clue as to the spirit behind the structure. The age of reason happens to be the title of a book by Thomas Paine. Now you can colour him any which way you want to, but whichever way, one glaring colour shines through. Thomas was a hater of Christianity. That's the second clue to the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones. The third is the fact that the Guidestones feature as what could be seen as a replacement to the Ten Commandments of the Christian God with the new Ten Commandments of the New Age, because I will not steal, cheat, lie, kill, and so on, they're just, well, too narrow for the new age, for the age of reason. Clearly designed to be a take on the biblical commandments, being ten in number, they are all very vague, very vague indeed. But anyone can ascertain the horror that must first take place before this new age can begin by looking at the first commandment, sorry, guideline. Because this one's not vague at all. Maintain humanity at under 500 million. That's right. A reduction of at least 7 billion human beings would be necessary for that. This thing costs the equivalent of half a million US dollars to build. And the street it's located on is named after it. So that tells you how much reach its creators had. Its presence alone is a disgrace and a declaration of execution to most living people alive today. But let's go on to the fourth clue as to the spirit behind these monuments. 
the monuments outlining the age of reason. The name R.C. Christian, the so-called person who commissioned the building of these giant slabs, anyone who's versed in secret societies or is a high-ranking ranking member themselves would instantly recognize the pseudonym as a reference to the secret society known as the Rosicrucians, which is just another secret society branch that exists under the umbrella of Freemasonry which is an extension of all secret societies of the past and is now the mother of all of them. In this Masonic website, Worshipful Master Wynne Westcott urges the Freemasons to consider their status as Rosicrucians. The RC stands for Rosenkrauts. Christian Rosenkrauts is the mythical founder of the Rosicrucian order. And as impossible as it is for me to prove that Thomas Paine himself the writer of Age of Reason was a Freemason. He did also write this book, The Origin of Freemasonry. That is the spirit behind the Georgia Guidestones, the satanic spirit, and a straight off the bat view of this approaching new age. I told you, the whole system is about to change, and it's not going into the future, it's actually going back into the past. The old religion, that's what's taking everything over. And you'll walk straight into it, blind as a bat, thinking these people want to help you. They will appear as your saviors, forgetting or never being told in the first place that all this time there have been two societies in the world, the visible one, which is the one we're in, and the invisible one. Remember that the invisible one considers you profane, vile and vulgar. Why on earth would they want to keep you around? In a book I can't mention written by them, people are referred to as useless eaters. We've become excess inventory, redundant, and past our use-by date in their eyes. Think about this. According to a prediction by information technology and research advisory firm Gartner, one-third of jobs will be replaced by software, robots, and smart machines by 2025. That's four years away. Google Engineering Director Ray Kurzweil anticipates that robots will have reached human level intelligence by 2029. And by 2050, 80% of all jobs will be eliminated by automation. What on earth are you and your family good for then? What do you think the secret society will do to the vile multitude then? The utopia is coming, but it ain't your utopia. You still think that by the measure of the minds of international Satanism, you should be kept around? This excess baggage that the bulk of society has become? No, no, no. The new age is dawning. And generally speaking, you're not invited. It'll just look like you are. Remember that Charles Darwin, the Freemason, is listed as an influential figure in the Satanic Church. So, mass murder and mass death are natural and necessary themes in the name of evolution and artificially induced evolution into this. He is the same image in real life in Eilat Israel, seemingly unrelated to the seal on the US dollar bill, right? But standing in glory with a Masonic squaring compass, telling you exactly who owns this pyramidal symbol, complete with the one eye on top. Same symbol, same designers, worshipping the same God. You should be getting goosebumps by now. Is this a conspiracy led by international Freemasonry? Oh, you don't have to bet your life on it, because your life has already been placed as a bet on your behalf and without your knowledge, but with your permission. Because all of the information is hidden in plain sight. In your face is where it's hidden. You're going to lose this battle unless you've been hidden in Jesus Christ, the only one who warns you that the new age is a trap and that it is the climax to this epic drama being played out on planet Earth. Now hang on, brace yourself, because I ain't going to let you down. This is a magazine called The New Age, but if you press rewind, you can find its source. Supreme Council of 33 Degree Freemasonry. This one stretches way back to 1922. 
See the twin pillars of Freemasonry? Look, this is 19th century Freemason and New Age pioneer Helena Blavatsky on the cover of this edition. She's the one who wrote that darkness is absolute light and that Satan is the god of our planet and that we are in hell. But do you think the readers of these magazines are told that? No. Darkness is sold as light. Satan is disguised and it's him in the details. This Masonic New Age magazine was the precursor to all magazines and trends, promoting the great deception of self-love and spirituality. Meanwhile, you're feeding off the plate that Luciferians serve you. Look at how the Satanic Bible in 1966 reveals the reality behind the curtain. Evidence of a new Satanic Age. A new age. The new Satanic Age. All rigged and all propelled by Freemasonry. Satanism's magic cloak. After all, and I think you should have guessed by now, that Anton Zandor LaVey, the founder of the Satanic Church, the one who vowed to help destroy Christianity, is himself a Freemason. I can't prove it to you, but I know it. Because of not only his obvious fondness of the fraternity of the Freemasons and the mention of it in his Satanic Bible, and its vital role in the Satanic takeover, but also because of the symbols, specifically this one, generally called the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. Freemason James de Rothschild displaying the Devil's Claw or the Lion's Paw. X Factus L.A. Reid showing the Devil's Horns next to fellow Freemason Avril Lavigne. The Secret Society sign for the Devil's Number and displaying the Devil's Claw over and over. The better example is with New Age guru Annie Besant co-writer of Lucifer magazine and 33rd degree Freemason, also showing the lion's paw here and here. But the best example I have is with Aerosmith, guitarist Joe Perry clearly displaying the sign of the master of the second veil of the Freemasons, and right next to him, Stephen Tyler, doing the lion's paw. Clearly both Freemasons, secretly showing their allegiance with symbols, and here's Anton LaVey displaying the same Masonic symbol. Yes, a Freemason founded the Satanic Church.